I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, I would like to talk today about um, similarity of geometrical objects. Um, first, before going into mathematically rigorous or almost rigorous definition of similarity, let's just think about what kind of uh, geometrical objects we, we may call similar. Um, how about two points? Are they similar? Intuitively, yes. And I actually would like to refer to intuition right now, before, before we're going into any kind of rigorous definition. Okay, fine. How about two segments? Are they similar? Well, I understand they're not congruent, not equal in length, but are they similar? Well, again, intuitively, similarity is referred to shaped more or less the same way. And they are shaped the same way, more or less. So I would say these are two similar objects. How about a little bit more complex, something like this and this. Are they similar? Well, probably not. And again, we are talking about only intuitive kind of understanding of similarity. Uh, now, why are they not similar? Well, because this is kind of angular, it's a triangle, and this is circle, it doesn't have any angles. All right, fine, let's just do it slightly differently. Let's just have two angular figures. Let's say this one and this one. Are they similar? Again, probably not, because there are three angles here and four angles there. All right, how about two triangles? This one and this one. Are they similar? Again, although they do look alike, however, it doesn't look like this is the same kind of a shape, if you wish. Yes, they both have three angles, but angles are different. So it looks like sing uh, a a a angularity by itself um, is not sufficient for uh, being similar. We need something which is something like this. These two, although not congruent and not equal in size, etc., do look similar. And why do we feel that they are similar? Well, primarily because their angles are the same, and obviously the number of angles and number of sides, etc. So, how can we define two different geometric figures to be similar to each other in a little bit more mathematical fashion? Well, we can always talk about um, equality of the, uh, of the angles and proportionality of the sides, but I don't want this to be defined this way because how about two circles? This one and this one. Are they similar? Well, seems to be, right? But we can't really define any kind of angles here or, or sides. There is no such thing. So I would like to approach similarity from slightly different angle and uh, it, would, uh, it would be more universal and applicable not only to triangles, quadrangles, etc., but basically to all geometrical figures. For instance, this one and this one. They also look similar, right? Okay, so let's go and try to define similarity um, in a little bit more rigorous fashion. First of all, um, let me recall um, what transformations we already know, uh, which we usually call congruent transformations. Now, if you remember, we can do something like a parallel shift, which means a figure like this will be transformed into a figure like this. Um, now, the parallel shift sometimes is called translation. We also know that there is a rotation, which means something like this can be rotated into something like this. Just turn it and shift it. And we also know that there is another congruent transformation 
which would transform something like this into something like this, which is symmetry relative to um, the axis. Now, having done, having basically recalled these transformations, I would like to add one more transformation, and, and using this transformation, I would define the similarity. So, what transformation I, I need right now? Well, it's called scaling. Um, scaling basically means the following. You have one particular point on the plane, which is called a center of scaling. And then each point, wherever it is, uh, would be transformed into another uh, point using the following rule. So the center of scaling, let's call it Q, is fixed, and also fixed something which we called a factor of scaling. Now, this factor of scaling can be any real number. So, let's say factor of scaling is one half. What does it mean? It means that any point, wherever it is, would be transformed along this particular line in such a way that the distance, whatever it is right now, will be multiplied by factor. So if it's one half, this point will be shifted to half of this segment. So if that was A, and this is B, so A would be transformed into B. For factor equals one half. Now, if the factor is equal to, let's say, two, then this segment would be multiplied by two in lengths, and it will be here. I meant transformation here. Now, what about the negative uh, factors? Well, negative is basically the same thing, except we go to this direction. So we do two things. Number one, we basically reflect A to A prime. So if factor is equal, let's say, minus one half. First, we reflect it to A prime relative to this center from A to A prime. It's a symmetry uh, relative to the point. And then we basically multiply the lengths of this by absolute value of the factor, and you will have B prime. And finally, if A is transformed by the factor of minus 2, it will be, again, first we symmetrically reflect relative to the point, and then we multiply this length by the absolute value of the factor, and we will have C prime. So, it's quite easy to understand what actually is um, the scaling. Now, any other point, let's say, let's call it this point M, would be transformed according to exactly the same rule, which means I will connect it to the center of the scaling, and then multiply this particular uh, lengths by whatever the factor is. Positive it will be this way, negative will be this way. Now, what's important to understand is that every point on the plane would be transformed in exactly the same way regardless of what direction we are scaling. So, this direction would be the same factor as that direction, or this direction, or this direction from the center. Uh, this property is called um, uh, isotropic. Isotropic is basically equal in, in, in all directions. So that's why I put this uh, word there. So I would actually refer to certain words so we, we will know where we are. So we have basically decided that scaling uh, is supposed to be isotropic, uh, which means in every direction we are scaling by the same factor, and we are basically either stretching or uh, shrinking uh, the distance from the center of scaling of any point along the line which connects the center with this point. 
and in case the factor is negative, we just go to another side of this line. But in any case, it's exactly the same thing. So this is a transformation of scaling. Now, why did I define it? Well, let's look again and at, at, at this picture of something which I consider, well, it's kind of similar, right? So my purpose was to, to preserve the shape, but to change the size. And the factorization, this scaling, that's what actually is changing the size. So I presume that um, I have a transformation of scaling which will transform one into another. So this point would be transformed into this point, which means they're supposed to be on the same line from some center of scaling. And this point would be transformed this point would be transformed into this line, which means these two lines are on the same scaling. Now we are dealing with this center of scaling. And if the proportionality of these two segments, let's say it looks like it's about two, right? This is about half the size of this. So if proportionality between this and this is the same as between uh, this and this, then we are talking about scaling relative to this center and the factor equal to ratio between this length and this length or this length, this length, and, and this length, etc. So these points are corresponding to, uh, no, that probably should call it A prime. B and B prime, C and C prime. So these points are scaling one into another, one into another. And thereby, we are transforming this particular geometrical figure into this. So it looks like scaling and similarity are related to each other um, concepts. I think we are ready right now to define what actual similarity is. Um, now, one more uh, thing before that. Now, let's consider these two are similar because we can scale one into another. How about these two? So I turned this particular figure this way. Well, because I'm turning, which means I'm transforming uh, congruently, uh, transforming one into another, similarity should not really change. I mean, this is as similar to this as this, which means that if I would like to use transformation to be able to transform one figure into another, I should use not only scaling, but also um, congruent transformation of parallel shift uh, and uh, which is translation and uh, and rotation and symmetry relative to uh, the axis. So all my congruent transformations also should participate. So now the definition. Two figures which can be transformed one into another using these transformations of uh, um, rotation, uh, translation, uh, reflection, and scaling using some um, center and some factor. Then these two figures can be called similar. This is a definition. So existence of uh, congruent and uh, scaling transformations um, is basically a definition of uh, similar geometrical figures. So I don't have to really talk about um, angles uh, or, or lengths of segments, etc., because they might not actually exist. We can have a form as, uh, as non-angular like this one. Um, this is a more universal uh, definition, and uh, I think it's always more preferable if you're dealing with something uh, as universal as, as similarity. You don't want to be restricted only to triangles or quadrangles, etc. Now, all these properties of triangles and quadrangles with uh, preserved angles and proportionality of the sides 
I will address all these, but they will be not a definition of the similarity. They will be the consequence from um, this particular definition, which is based on scalability. Okay, now let's talk again a little bit about scaling. If I have scaled one figure into another using this center and, le <clears throat> and let's say a factor of two, like in this particular case, um, what does it mean actually? Well, it's, it's an operation on geometric objects, right? Transformation, any transformation is some kind of an operation. Now, if you remember, we were, when we were talking about transformation, uh, about operations, we were talking about certain sets of operations which are uh, kind of complete uh, to each other. Now, what does it mean in this particular case? Number one, is there a scaling which which is a unit operation, which means it does not change the geometric object? Well. The answer is yes. Have any scaling with a factor equal to 1, and you will have basically a, a transformation which doesn't really move any point. Any point will just you know, remain uh, at its own position after this transformation. Now, next, is there a reverse transformation? So if I have a factor 2, for this particular scaling. Can I transform back from here to here? Well, answer is obviously yes. We just use the inverse factor. If this is 2, use 1 over 2. If this is minus 2, use minus 1 over 2. If this is minus 1, use another minus 1. 1 over minus 1, which is minus 1. So whenever you're using 1 over this factor, you will have a reverse transformation, which means all the transformations of scaling are, well, complete. For any one, there is a reverse one. Um, there is a unit transformation which doesn't change anything. Now, how about commutative uh, and, and associative laws? Well, yes, they are preserved as well. Because if you think about um, it's actually very easily, um, uh, it can be very easily proved from, uh, from the properties of multiplication. Because what are we doing? We are multiplying this length by the factor. Now, if you are multiplying it once by a factor of 2, and then another time by the factor of 3, it actually means you are multiplying the lengths by 2 and by 3. But it's the same thing as if you multiply it by 3 and by 2, which is 6 anyway, because the multiplication uh, of the numbers is commutative. So the scaling uh, of different factors using the same um, center of scaling is commutative. And for obvious reason, uh, it's associative as well because of associativity between the numbers. All right, what did I miss? I think I have covered practically everything. Uh, right, uh, just one more uh, obvious remark. If you have two um, congruent objects, are they similar? Well, obviously they are similar, uh, or object is similar to itself with the uh, factor of similar of uh, uh, scaling of equal to one, as, as I have already mentioned. And uh, other than that, I think we have covered this completely. Now, the purpose of this lecture was to introduce the definition of similarity based only on um, transformations of scaling, um, uh, rather than resorting to uh, definitions for triangles separately from quadrangles, and then we don't know what to do with circles, etc., etc. So, similarity based on scaling is much better definition because it's much more universal. 
And uh, there is one more word which I wanted to talk about. This scaling uh, is in mathematics sometimes is called homotopy. Um, it's just the same word, I mean the same meaning, different word, the same meaning. Uh, it sounds a little bit more scientific. <laughs> That's why probably people like to use it, homotopy. Anyway, uh, I'll probably use scaling anyway. Um, so again, the purpose of this uh, lecture was just to introduce you to the definition of similarity. Now next lectures will be devoted to uh, how similarity is uh, related to angles or to segments or to triangles or to circles and segments and together, whatever it is. And then some problems will be introduced. This is just an introductory lecture to concepts of similarity. Uh, don't forget that um, everything is on unizor.com. Gradually this website is um, getting populated with lectures. There are about 100 lectures uh, right now for uh, different kinds of uh, aspects of mathematics. I do recommend to, to go to this website and just take the whole course, whatever is available right now. And I do recommend parents to uh, participate in this educational process of their students as well. Uh, or maybe teachers who would like to, to introduce this way of, of, of learning. So people would learn from the lectures and then the teacher of the group can actually answer the, some more difficult questions or uh, put some light on, on certain uh, difficult parts of this. Um, okay, so again, it's unizor.com and it's free, so basically use it as you want. Thank you very much.